Welcome affiliate listeners. Oh my gosh, I realized I was wearing this hat before. So we're gonna go no hat for this episode. And we have a special episode with an amazing guest. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's perfect for today. This is this going <laughs> later. This <laughs> is a really weird introduction, guys. And I'm excited <laughs> because we're we have an amazing guest today that I'm really, really excited about, a personal friend. Um, but before we get to the end, we are I want to introduce our co-host that's joining us today. Thomas, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Very yeah. well. <laughs> not throw your hat off and reveal yeah. your really messed up hair. Well, maybe not. But that's okay. That's good. Um, so as uh, we talk about tradition, we are going to open up introducing our guests along with a, a bottle of alcohol um, that's specific for them. But we have the amazing, the man that almost doesn't mean an introduction, Steve Gunn, who is a co-owner of the, the branding behind all of Cheech and Chong's cannabis brands. So your CBD and your THC only sold in states where it's legally applicable. So nothing bad there. But um, <laughs> joining us one. today, and we are going to be talking about, I think, something that people always want to know, which is how to work with celebrities effectively with your brand and also being really cool, which see you happen to know how to do both. So, <laughs> I know how to do one of those things. One of those pretty, things. <laughs> pretty well. Yeah, pretty well. being really cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm We're actually winging the celebrity. I got thing. a text on the way in here. I got fired. So I'm just, <laughs> just the cool thing if you wouldn't. If you wouldn't uh, okay. Well, I'm glad we're going to pick yeah. that sore spot that just yeah. happened uh, for, for the rest of the time. But no, if you guys have ever been curious about what it's like to work with a celebrity, how to do that, um, we won't tell you that, but we're going to talk about somebody <laughs> that at least is doing it now. So uh, before we jump into that, as we said, if you come in into our studio, you actually be in Boise, we're gonna make sure we treat you a little bit special. And oh. we do that by giving you a special bottle of alcohol and enjoying oh. it during the podcast. Thank you. Now I chose El Tesoro, which I think is a fantastic brand of tequila. In fact, for a lot of people out there, you, you've probably heard of like Don Julio, 1942, um, you know, which is gonna cost you about 150 bucks, all those fancy brands out there. But El Tesoro has been a long time family. They have been using the same agave farm for a super long time. That. So a fraction of the cost, you get much cleaner, better flavors than something you would spend double for with the Don Julio 1942. And I got that for oh. you specifically, Steve, because I think as a marketer, you are top shelf, best oh. brand out there, oh. but not enough people know how great you are. So you're an El Tesoro, <laughs> that you wow. are a hidden gem of brilliance, which we're about to expose today, how great you are. So just be prepared, wow. lock Thank in. You. And let's have some tequila open it up. Appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. So. I appreciate that all these bottles are doing cool things with their toppers. I like yeah. this little That's neat. mortar pestle thing it's got going on. I don't know what a proper pour is. Neither do I. I think I over poured the plantains. It which... was definitely more than a shot. Yeah. Wow. I under poured for me. I'm sorry. That seems <laughs> irresponsible. <laughs> so we're going to highlight this here for that. All right. All right. So salute. And we're going to say, to, today happens to be 420, and Does. you do work with Cheech and Chong. So to 420. Hey. To 420. Feels perfect. That is delicious. That is <laughs> that's you. delicious. Well, that's Just good. like you. Surprisingly yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a compliment and an insult all wrapped yeah. together. You know, you're that's a lot cooler good. than people think you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I talk to a lot of people. You're way cooler than everyone, they say. <laughs> yeah. That's what everyone says about tequila. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, as we enjoy this very, very delightful tequila. That is delightful. Um, so before we kind of jump in, Steve, to the fact that you, you got to a point where I think a lot of people envy you're working with, you know, multiple celebrities, very, yeah. very successful with the brands. But <laughs> it sounds weird to say, you didn't always start there. Which is, <laughs> no. <laughs> that wasn't a great clean transition. But <laughs> how did you get to that point? And I think it, I, I always, I bring that up because we've talked a lot about this before in the past. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a really important story and impactful one that, Oftentimes, we like to think that success happens overnight, but it doesn't. Um, no, and, no. And you're a perfect example of a lot of the grind and how it creates a lot of value. Yeah. I mean, if it's an overnight success story, I think we're still in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, you know, we're still sleeping. Like, <laughs> yeah. Still feels like work. I'll be honest with you. Um, no. Um, how far back do we want to go? Um, That's your call. Yeah. All right. uh, probably not birth. If we could skip oh, to at least maybe employment time. I was times, absolutely going to do that, that line from the jerk. I was born I was a just poor black boy. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I don't know if you can make that joke this year, so I'm gonna I'm gonna, I made that I'm gonna joke stow at a very it. Very inopportune time this year, actually. <laughs> nice. I still cringe about it. Like that was a mistake because no one got it. I just looked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it would be if you don't know that bit, you might. Yeah, feel no, it feels awful. Feedback. Yeah, it feels yeah. feels and weird. It is, even it saying it's it. definitely getting older as the years go on, not younger. So yeah, yeah. average age yeah. of people who get that joke uh, and would use it. Uh, the wrong way, or, yeah. or both, they're they're intersecting. The Venn yeah. diagram is approaching. You're definitely circle. not gray free. Yeah, I put myself directly in the middle of that Venn diagram. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
But so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Less skipping on the past, more on the <laughs> skipping past that part. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm sort of uh, an anomaly in the sort of direct response business in that. Um, you know, you hear a lot of, of people talk about how like, oh, I was doing something else. I was changing tires for a living and I just kind of found my way into this or whatever. Like I actively sought this out years and years ago and struggled at it for a really long time. I, uh, I grew up wanting to be a direct response marketer. I was like <laughs> eight years old when I saw, um, does anyone in the room remember Don LaPree? Oh no. man, no. I, okay, I'm gonna do a terrible impression. It's uh, it's, it's my great. superpowers. That's awful perfect. impressions. <laughs> um, you might remember the the uh, infomercial. From my tiny one bedroom apartment, I made millions with tiny classified ads in my local newspaper, and you can too. The voice sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, it actually yeah. Does, yeah. yeah don't, but I don't do know not why. Google him. Do not Google him. The story ends <laughs> very like bad. Tony Robbins was. Yes, he was a he was yeah. a he was an awful <laughs> knockoff Tony Robbins, he and he was like my he's hero. He's always got stains on his tie. The voice just feels... <laughs> no no he Hawaiian shirts only because ah, it was a yeah. laptop oh. lifestyle business before I they had do laptops. Know what you're talking about yes, yes. okay yeah, yeah that story ended very tragically. <laughs> do, do not Google it. Um anyway. As I just but, Google this. Right yeah, do now. not do that. <laughs> you do yourself a favor. It, it, it takes a turn right around like 2003. <laughs> but uh, no, so I saw that infomercial when I was like eight. And, you know, at first, I, at least for me, when I was a kid, I, when I hear stuff like that, I just like, oh, there's got to it's like it sounds like a video game cheat code. I'm like, mm. oh, if I just get the right newspaper ad. Um, and I throw that in a newspaper, I'm rich. And it's like, it's hilarious because a lot of like marketers and affiliates think that way now. Mm -hmm. Like if I just steal your ad, I'll be rich. And it's like, yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> you just uh, play harder for everybody. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah no, I just keep, I'll yeah. swipe my way to success. Well, to be fair, TM, that was, by the way, I got a That was also out. eight year old logic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I think it's important to see or, make. or yeah. 30 year old grown adults who work in this industry. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I, I sort of fell in love with this weird concept. I thought it was like a cheat code to life. I'm like, oh, if I just, and it's like, that's what it was. Luckily for me, my dad sent away for the course. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was like, dad, I, I want I this. I think he, he pretended to humor me, but I think he was like a Hoping buyer. Out. Right? Yeah. Like he, he was like, wait a second, you yeah. can do this? And oh, I just, this, this, work out with this is for Steve. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, uh, I got my first well, sort of Steve. introduction. It was like a, basically a DR copywriting course. And it was like uh, just a little manual that said like, put these ads, like come up with something to create a free report about. So this was like, lead pages before there were lead pages put a create a free report about something and then of course like the number one thing to create a free report about is how to make money creating free reports <laughs> right and then put an ad in the newspaper that says something along the lines of like free report reveals how to make money from tiny classified ads right and they call in they get your this is back before the internet uh that's how old i am um <laughs> You also I, were eight when this happened. It's not yeah, like I was eight old. in the late seventies. <laughs> um, no, uh, it was it was the sort of mid to late nineties, and um, you would you put an ad in the newspaper. People would call in to a pre-recorded voicemail, which was how like landing pages worked back in the day. They'd send you a check for like three dollars for postage for the free report, and then the free report was obviously a sales letter to your paid course. Um, I never did it because I was eight. I, I didn't know f about s when I was a oh. kid. So, um, but. Uh, yeah, anyway, it, it just sort of, from then on, I was like, there's got to be a way to make money at this, right? And so, you know, I kind of went in and out of it for years as a kid. I would, like, look up, like, old marketing books and stuff and uh, ended up finding, <laughs> this is weird, the Gary Halbert letter, like, the, that, mm -hmm. that's still The online. born letters? No, no, the the actual, if you go to Gary Halbert Newsletter or the halbertnewsletter.com, uh, whatever okay. it is, and they're, like, the world's worst web design, it's, yeah. like, they look like they're reprinted on yellow legal pages. They're awful. Uh, but the, obviously the content is amazing. I found it the weekend he died. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. The very first time I read Gary Halbert was the weekend he died. Um, so don't read any of my stuff. Yeah. Around, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I've been sort of a, a marketing junkie. And then uh, basically at the time I was working like a regular job. I, I, uh, I worked as like a sort of a sales manager for this B2B company that sold parts to plumbers. And I kept trying to infuse like all this direct response stuff. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I kept trying to put all those like DR headlines on our like plumbing newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and like eventually they're like, you gotta go. You can't, <laughs> you don't, you here. don't work here anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, took a, took a phone sales job because of the Gary Halbert newsletter. He said, if you want to, if you want to be a great direct response copywriter, you should take a sales job where you get to make as many sales calls as possible. Cause you get to talk to lots and yeah. lots of prospects, find out what the actual, you know, uh, uh, objections are, figure mm -hmm. out objection handling, and then you're on your way. So that's what I did. And actually, 
that job was how I met my now partner, Brandon. He, oh, he cool. hired me for my first sales job. Well, that's awesome. What were yeah. you selling? Um, I don't know that the statute of limitations has run out <laughs> on that. <laughs> so, no, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't anything illegal, but it's not something I would I'd do today. Like uh, back in the day, basically the entire sort of business information industry ran on high ticket coaching and not mm. the kind that's like popular today where the front end funnel is just to get you into the person's mastermind. This was like a kind of churn and burn model where, you know, people would buy either off television or this is sort of the early days of biz op on the internet. And then we would sell them to a company that did like, you know, mass coaching. Gotcha. Mm, gotcha. So I got better at that at the time than I now realize I want it to be. I, just, <laughs> I look back now, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. So. Yeah. So, so you went, so the, once being brand, you guys kind of started exploring a lot into the I mean, yeah, we kind of, we kind of uh, grew apart and came back together a couple of times over the last, geez, it's almost 17 years now. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. so how'd you make the break out of that to the copywriting piece? <laughs> so I, I, like I said, I, I always wanted to be a copywriter mm -hmm. and we were experimenting with standing up our own offer at the time, the, the company that I worked for. And we, we brought on a guru. I won't mention his name. He seems like a nice enough guy, um, but he was a terrible copywriter, <laughs> at least according to what I knew. And I didn't know anything, but like I was like, <laughs> well, you knew that one thing. <laughs> I did, yeah, well, yeah. I, I, well, I read a lot of the Gary Halbert letters, so that so makes me an expert. Eight, I yeah. Read this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So uh, he wrote his own sales letter for uh, a biz op lead offer. It was like a bill today. You, you paid like 97 bucks or something for it, uh, but it was still just the purpose of it was to generate the name and the phone number to call them and to sell them into coaching. Um, and it it bombed. It was awful. And so they asked me uh, to, I was like, well, here's why. And I did it like just way too confident for my own good. <laughs> and I was like, well, because your headline sucks and this is bad deck copy. And I just like went through it and just eviscerated this poor guy. Um, and like almost on like a dare, the, my boss was like, we well, think you're so good. Write one. I was like, okay. And it turned out it worked. Um, and uh, there's a... <laughs> There's a, uh, a a name that kind of gets floated around a lot these days, uh, not not so much in a great light. But you guys remember Trump University? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they also hired the guy, the main copywriter from Trump University, in a head-to-head -head split test. And so my my early claim to fame was that I, I beat him. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. So I put that on the mantle. He got right. fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, and, and just sort of sort of taking on marketing and copywriting projects from there. I'm glad you were able to make copy great again. It's really important. <laughs> no, this was the first time. This is I made copy great the first time. I need yeah. to try and find a way to get more Trumpisms in. So just just let be. Let be, Steve. Oh, <laughs> One more of these and I'll, I'll launch into a terrible impression. Okay, sounds <laughs> great. Sounds great. We'll get there. Let me just finish that real yeah. fast. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, so one of the reasons I just always like bringing that up is I think uh, a lot of your journey was around um, investing in learning and trying and succeeding and failing, right? Yeah. Like there were their wins, there were losses, but Still. it wasn't, yeah. It, but I think when I look at the markers that sustain for a long period of time, it is a recipe of failures and successes. Yeah, time in the right? market. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a bit of a grind away. And I think um, it obviously marketing never wants to tell people that it's a grind because it's also not your fault. Um, and it's not that hard, right? Those are the two <laughs> things I want you to believe. Yet you can do this in your underpants. Which, yeah, I mean, yes. I am right now. That's a comfort yeah. thing. That's just for me. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but I work a lot in my underpants. <laughs> really... I work almost exclusively in my underpants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's more of a me issue. Yeah, than... that's. I, I don't need to be judged about why it, but I'm not... just letting you know it's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. It's unhireable versus business opportunity <laughs> aren't the same thing. <laughs> yeah. so, um, but but I, I think I see so many like new marketers, and sometimes people get really early success, um, and, and that's great, but sustainability comes through a grind. It comes through just yeah. as many, probably more failures than actual wins. The wins just happen to be very big. But um, I just if think you it's you do it story. Right, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. And that's just it. Like, there are probably, you know, uh, to, to, uh, to risk sort of uh, torturing an analogy with an inch of its life, you ever, you ever heard about like the way they do like drug trials? Like they start with cell cultures and they move to a mouse and mm -hmm. then they, they always report the findings when it's the mouse. And like, well, we cured cancer in mice. Yeah, um, and there's no telling whether it's going to work. Which is just what we not. need more yeah. mice. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah, finally somebody has cured the scourge of mouse cancer. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> Thank uh, goodness. and then they go, all right. Well, let's see if it works in people. And of course, in, invariably, it doesn't. Other, otherwise, you would have heard about that story. But uh, I always wonder, like, how many times did it not work in mice, but it would have worked in people, but we scrapped it because it didn't work in mice. Like, mm -hmm. who the hell knows? Um, and there's a ton, probably a ton of like offers that are like that. They were probably ten percent away from being optimized into a winner. But they threw them away because you just yeah. get tired of the grind. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's very if, like, true. You know, like sometimes, uh, what's that Michael Jordan line? I, I love, uh, I never have lost, the, t- the clock just ran out. Mm. A lot of times you just kind of have to cut bait and move on to the next offer before you're done trying to test the current one because yeah. it's just it's just time. You're 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 better off just digging for panning for gold and finding trying to find something that's easier to optimize into a winner. Mm-hmm. Getting closer, so you're not, yeah. you're not having to slave away. But um, and it's you know it's weird because that's one of those things where it's like it's a dangerous game because you can just go too far. Right? Oh yeah, like there's a bad idea that's a bad idea, and you're just gonna fall in love with bad idea. You know, you can have a toxic relationship with yeah. an offer at times. <laughs> How do you go about setting setting yourself up for success where you're likely not chasing a bad idea? I. If I uh, if I knew how to answer that question, I'd be far wealthier. <laughs> <laughs> I have chased many a bad idea down a deep, deep hole. Well, I have a better question for you that has nothing to do with marketing. What do you think they do with all the dead mice? I was talking <laughs> to my wife about this the other day, and she just told me, she's like, shut up. I and I was, like, I, was like, yeah. I was like, I was like, but you have to imagine, like, there's some facility with just pounds of dead mice that they're just hucking out. Um, you feed them to the test owls. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> something. Turns so. out the owls like cancer. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I don't like these cancer-free mice. <laughs> so. I'm just picturing the second you said that, I, I just pictured like a tiny little mouse matrix where it's just fields and fields of dead <laughs> mice hooked up to computers. <laughs> little mice batteries. It's really, yeah. it's really te- powers Tesla. You open it up, you're like, it's just dead mice. It's tons of dead mice. Stuart Little. So, sorry, this is like, yeah. I know this is not I would remotely not productive, but the fact that it came up, I was like, I have to, I need somebody that might care about this conversation. By the way, sorry about chewing ice into the microphone. I don't know if that's getting picked up or not. <laughs> well, we'll it out. It's fine. Oh, okay. But if you didn't say anything, we wouldn't, you know. Now well, now that I've in. said it, you got to leave it in. Yeah, we'll yeah. leave it in. And people are like, what is that? And then I'll explain right later. Um, so, <laughs> no, anyway, going back to, to real work. But yeah, no, I think just knowing that that, that grind, that the fact that you're putting in that effort, um, I think it's just, there's a lot of people out there that might feel they're in the grind right now and they think that they're failures because of it. But it's, it's not necessarily that you're a failure. It's just, it takes time. It takes effort. Yeah. So like the thing I'm probably, if, if anyone knows my name, who's watching this is, and so hide all four of you. But, um, <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Mom. But, yeah. <laughs> Two more in this room. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that offer, the, the first Tommy Chung CBD good vibes offer, uh, is in its current form, essentially unedited from its original form. Right, that thing was a. Uh, the oh, wow. first draft went online. We've made a few design changes to it, the occasional headline swap, but like that thing is ninety nine percent the exact same DNA as the day it launched in April of twenty twenty. Even the VSL. Well, the VSL is a uh, is a modification of the text sales letter. So that one feels like, hey, overnight success story. You put something out, and it's just boom, mm-hmm. millions of dollars in revenue. Um, time the market right, perfect celebrity for the brand, blah blah blah, all that stuff. We'll, I'm sure we'll get into some of that. Yep. And it's like, okay, so yeah, it was an overnight success story. It's like, yeah, right after all the winners, after all the losers that we launched and failed and spent thousands of dollars testing, and right before all of the other offers we've launched since then, right, that continues to generate revenue. Um, those customers continue to buy product. It's fantastic. I love that business. And we've we've pivoted and tried launching other businesses with other celebrities. We'll probably talk about it. And a lot of those failed miserably. So it's like I'm the guy with the golden pen who can write the offer that knocks it out of the park on the first try and generates. I mean, to this point, it's I don't know. You can edit this out if it's if it's gauche, but something like ninety million dollars in revenue, something like that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that in. I mean, that's yeah. all right. I don't, yeah, I don't, <laughs> we're gonna put that in the headline. Yeah. Ninety million dollar copywriter. Yeah. 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 Sounds to me just like ten million to get to eight figures right? or nine figures. <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, an, I'm yeah. easily a nine figure copywriter when yeah, you count yeah, yeah. when you count all the losers. You add those up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's like we'll spend yeah. money on those. Yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah no, hey, yeah. we have some customers for sure. <laughs> I made uh, like in 2022, we generated, we had a business that generated six million dollars in revenue off the back of a single offer, and that sounds great until you find out we spent six point five in traffic, <laughs> and we spent two million on product. There you go. You're like, oh, you add all that up, and that's that's a big negative number, yeah. <laughs> and that is why I'm not retired. <laughs> so, well, yeah. with that though, I think you brought up some great things. I just, I, I think it's really important, and that's why I was bringing up that I kind of a continuing theme that there's a lot of people out there want to tell you success could happen overnight, but, and it can, it does. It can. can. You just don't get to pick which night. Yeah. We, that's a great way to put it because we've talked to the people that have their first offer is amazing. Right. And very first thing I wrote one and ran for six months and I made personally, I made, I don't know, 10 grand in royalties or something like that off that, that the, where I got, uh, basically, Sounds bullied like into a not test. a great contract, but <laughs> yeah, no, like, why I'm sure I made a lot more money than that. He's a junior but... copywriter, though, yeah, right? no, yeah. I was yeah. the very first thing I ever wrote. I got paid yeah. nothing up front, but it started cr- cranking, and so they gave me a cut. Nice, thanks, yeah. thank you. Uh, and so, very first thing I wrote, smash success, uh, you know, for somebody. Uh, the second thing I wrote, 
ab- abject bomb because it turns out I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And you don't learn through just winning all the time. No. And even when you know what you're doing, some of them bomb. Yeah. Like yeah. you just you 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 know, like it's a hard part people ask me for like copyright recommendations. It's like, man, like <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's always like, more like who do you want to work with? Yes. Because it's working yeah, with somebody. Exactly. Yeah. Success is not a, just money in, copy out. Yeah. Right? Success yeah. is a journey, not just a book you wrote, right? Yeah. Like it takes some time sometimes, right? And that's that's more what I'm trying to highlight. Like you're right, timing is something that we can't control. Yeah. The right offer to the right, and we're gonna get right into that here cool. as we talk about kind of celebrity stuff. If, if that, I could pause you just one second, because yeah. I, I do have an idea on the hiring copywriters. Oh yeah. Uh, because I've I've done a fair amount of that over the last couple of years as well. Um at the end of the day, the everyone who's a professional writer is a pretty good writer. We're mm-hmm. all about equal when it comes to the words. I want to work with somebody whose ideas I like. Somebody who has a good process for coming up with interesting ideas, and I can see the way their brain works to try to put things together and go, hey, does this fit together? No. Does this fit together? And people who come up with good ideas and are a competent writer, which at a certain level, everyone's a competent writer, that's that's who I want to work with. That's good so way I like that. Yeah. yeah, that is really good. So let, with, with that, though, let's transition to now the success, right? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about the let's success. Talk about right? the let's success. talk about the success. So, people really seem to like it. Yeah, it seems to be popular. <laughs> yeah. So. 90 million. <laughs> <laughs> I should point out I kept very little of that. I have not, again, I. Shh, that's for later. I we drive a Camry. No, <laughs> I don't. The Matrix, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the mouse Matrix. <laughs> um, oh, what did I just hit? Sorry. Sorry, Dylan. Panic, <laughs> <laughs> look at Dylan. We're sorry. Sorry, this is like the weirdest the wor- part of the podcast. The this is what happens when we stack podcasts to each yeah. other and I have there's no multiple bottles of drinks, drinks that happen, right? <laughs> um, so, no, I kicked, a, I kicked a cup, so don't worry. It was but our it didn't ice go over, earlier. So, yeah. Nope, nope, yep, yeah, I only mildly kicked it. So, um, <laughs> I have a weak kick, apparently. <laughs> no. So, so okay. going back to the success of Tom and John. So, I think one of the things I'd love to talk about, like, before we get into the things that are working now, why that was a perfect pairing, all the things in the market stuff... In fact, we'll just do this a broad question. Walk through the origin story of how did you go from, you know, trying a lot of stuff to hitting the home run that was Tommy Chong? How did you even find yourself in the room to be able to work and do a CBD product with Tommy Chong? So, I mean, you got to take yourself back to 2020. CBD was everywhere. We were one of them. Let's just do a way back yeah. machine. Woo! We were okay, one of a million. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, it was the world was a simpler place. Nobody, <laughs> nobody ever got sick. No one was mad at each other. All hats were blue. Do you remember that? Yeah. There, were, there were no red hats in America. There, uh, Five wrote a song about it. Um, but I uh, sorry, I have to pause the podcast. I'm going to go record that parody. Right yeah. <laughs> I'm but, uh, yeah. Oh man, no that is something the internet in needs to take care yeah. of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, anyway, um, so. CBD offers were literally everywhere. I mean, CBD yeah. kicked off in a big way in like 2017, 2018. After the Farm Bill passed, right? Well, well you, so everyone knew the it's Farm Bill was before, sort of yeah. inevitable in yeah. 2018. So by 2017, like anybody who was anyone in sort of high volume Nutra was trying to crank a CBD offer, um, us included, right? We had multiple CBD brands that were just Me Too brands. We were buying the product directly from a manufacturer out of South Florida, not the one, if you guys are all in the DR industry, not the one you're thinking of, <laughs> um, but a different one. Um, but, uh, and it was just, we ran it like any other offer, right? At this point in my career, we were doing a lot of like just high volume Nutra. So everything from Garcinia Cambogia to teeth whitener to CBD, like, oh, this, this looks like I'll have a little bit of a run. The day I realized CBD was probably going to work was actually after the first, uh, sorry, MMA reference, but after the first, uh, what? Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz fight, <laughs> mm. Nate Diaz was smoking a CBD names. vape, oh. uh, at the press conference and people were like, what are you doing? Cause Nate and his brother, Nick are, are both famous potheads. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his brother, Nick had, had gotten in big trouble for smoking pot, uh, while he was in the testing pool. And Nate's like, there ain't no THC in this It's perfectly legal. It's called CBD. You don't know nothing about it. And he's just, <laughs> you're just talk, very you're talking talking about, fashion too. Yeah. about THC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do your reading. Like, it was yeah. just very aggressive. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Do your reading. It I is a like, terrible Nate Diaz impression, but I'm just going to say I do, I like I do exclusively I like terrible yes, impressions. Yes, it's I great sh- terrible I did, I did tell you, you that. You commit, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Great. I mean, well, Nate Diaz and I have the same body type, which I think really helps. <laughs> Both very, very tall, very lanky. Yes. Uh, runners. Just so sexy, uh, Runners too. Yeah. yeah. Pure cardio. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> but uh, everything in my life is cardio. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> It is a video podcast, so the joke's going to land. It's cool. Nice. <laughs> nice. I love that. I love that. But uh, so I was like, okay, this feels like it's going to go mainstream. Like, this isn't going to be, you know, Oprah endorsing Hootia, which, by the way, is a thing happened. Look it up. 
Uh, but like this is this looks like this could go mainstream, and obviously we're right. So us along with everyone else had a, a CBD offering. We were doing well. I mean, we were an eight figure company um, without Tommy Chong, just running a Me Too unbranded CBD offering. We were just running the same advertorials everyone was running at the time. Like, hey, did you know that CBD cures everything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you got that? We we got. Do I have something for you? <laughs> you know. Do you have um, a problem? We can fix it. Yeah. <laughs> and so we made a decision. We made a conscious choice because there was a banking crunch in the CBD industry of 2018, 2019. Everyone lost their processing, including us. Uh, you know, we, we went from, you know, a run rate of over a million a month to, you know, 40,000 in revenue a month. I mean, Whoa. it was bad. It was bad. Um, you can't collect payments. Yeah. Was that, yeah, you can't. Yeah. You can't build the customers. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were using all of our Slight processing problem. just to maintain, like, customer service and, like, you know, do phone orders and stuff like that. So we had to shut down all the front end marketing and everything. So we, we just made the decision to pivot. And it wasn't to Tommy Chong at first. We actually had another CBD offer that was doing well. Uh, long form VSL wouldn't work today. The angle is kind of too pedestrian, but at the height of it, it kind of worked. Um, but it looked really good. Like we got an Emmy winning director to come out, like a documentary filmmaker. If I said his name and I'll, I'll say it if the uh, cameras are off, uh, you would know it. Like you've seen his work, I can guarantee you. He came and filmed our VSL for us. Oh, wow. he's no a, way. He's close personal friends with my partner, Brandon. Oh, man. Brandon knows everybody. Brandon knows everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, if, if, you, if we started this podcast with, like, hey, what's your key to success? I'm like, find someone with long coattails and hang. You know? <laughs> find <laughs> a potato <laughs> farmer. Right, right, yeah, oh, ride him. Ride him. Like em. that little cat in the poster. Just yeah. No, <laughs> I, I, I'm a very lucky man. I get to kind of, like, you know, noodle around in my copy kingdom and, and pretend I'm a chief and, uh, and I, I, I'm partnered with a guy who does everything. Like, who, he knows everybody. He understands business processes in a way that I never could. Um, him I and his wife are actually like a like power couple. Like, they're in, like, A lot of the big success stories we see in copywriters are they find an operations person. They find a business person. Right? Yeah. Like, and luckily, he yeah. found me. Yeah. Right? Like, he was like, he, like, I, I don't tell him this, and luckily he won't listen to this, but. Uh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, that's not a you thing. That's a me thing. Yeah. Uh, he loves you. I'm going to send it straight yeah, to Brandon. Send, yeah. like, Brandon, no, it's like, he talks so much I could not do him. this without him, or, or actually his wife, Brooke. Uh, she's incredible. They could easily do this without me. I don't mean it. Um, but, like. <laughs> In case he does listen, but uh, they could, they could, they could, they could replace me with another copywriter and it'd be just as good. Um, but anyway, um, we had this, you know, Emmy award winning documentary filmmaker shoot our VSL. So the VSL never really worked, right? It was like producing basically bake, break even acquisitions when we were buying the media ourselves. So there's no margin to bring on affiliates. Uh, there was no cash flow to, to grow, like to scale, but it looked fantastic. So the opportunity to just talk to Tommy Chunk's people came up because Tommy was exiting another CBD brand that he had launched with uh, a, a, one of the big names in CBD at the time. I don't want to throw stones, but uh, these guys had hundreds of millions of dollars in VC money and they couldn't make the brand work. Mm. And I, again, more confident than I deserve to be. I'm like, <laughs> Tommy Chung, you kidding me? That's the perfect spokesperson. I could make a billion dollars with Tommy Chung. And of course I was wrong. Um, well, I, for now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah, not quite, not quite there. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, Give it 10 more years. Yeah. And <laughs> we had this, we had this example of like, we don't want, you know, we understand these DR guys are a little shifting. It's like, no, this is the kind of thing we produce. And we we show them this like literally like could be submitted for an Emmy VSL. <laughs> um and so they were impressed. And so they gave us a shot. And uh uh hat tip to Stefan George and his mastermind copy accelerator. Uh they really he specifically his his uh RMBC framework really kind of sharpened my ability to execute on a plan. Um, like you kind of have to be a good writer to make it work. I think I hope, right? Otherwise, what am I good for? But uh, <laughs> if you are a competent writer, like having that framework really just it. I've seen it turn good writers into great copywriters. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it luckily in our case it worked. Like I said, first draft. And it's just been crushed ever since. So yeah. And with that, just go kind of the the contingent sex. So you put it out there. Um, you guys go through a heck of a time with primarily native, right? To to get that thing cooking, but. Um, you guys do incredibly well. Now, you transitioned that to even more because at the time you guys were just doing the CBD brand. So kind of talk yeah. through the success and then what that transitioned to for you. So, yeah, we did really, really well with uh, with the Tommy Chung offer. It still continues to do well. And that we'll circle back to this. But like the Tommy Chung brand has grown it, itself has grown into a ton more like the Cheech and Chong brand is actually reminds me a lot of the early days of the original Tommy Chung brand. Cheech and Chong have kind of gotten back together. They're, they're bringing their brands under one roof, so they brought us into the fold as a full partner this time as opposed to being just kind of licensing the name. Um, and that is going exceedingly well. I'm 
really stoked about that. But in the interim, there was like, okay, we're gonna do we're gonna do the biggest thing we've ever done. Um, I'm sitting around the boardroom one day, and by the boardroom, I mean it's like a small office above a warehouse. Don't ruin. But it does have a boardroom yeah, table in it. It's got yeah. a long table. So yeah. very, it takes and up the entire room. It takes, yeah, it really <laughs> You're like, like we probably should left it. it for no Only Brandon sits there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Steve, I heard what you said in the podcast. You sit over there. <laughs> oh no, I have a separate office in a different part of town. <laughs> uh, so we have a real office, a, a, a similar but smaller version of what you guys have here. Um, but because we actually we handle. That was the other thing we did differently. We was we produced our own product. Now it's like the best CBD product on the planet, and I, I don't just say that because I sell it. Like it's the only one I believe in. And you guys um, do use nano as well. Yeah. Oh, have you heard about that? Yeah, yeah I've heard. About yeah. It. I will say the only time I've ever felt the effects of a CBD product was through nano. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it works. Delivery. Like the science. Yeah. The science is legit on on nano uh, nano emulsion and CBD. Okay. My very unneeded testimonial of yes, <laughs> Nano is great. <laughs> Nano, Nano is great. You look like a good spokesperson for yeah, yeah. right yeah. now. Definitely yeah. with the hair. Yeah. Like, yeah. should I just put it out? I'm like, it works, guys. <laughs> Nano CBD, so called. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make you not care about this. <laughs> and that's anyway. uh, that is not an approved FDA claim. <laughs> I don't. He doesn't take my product. I um, no. Um, so yeah. Uh, because we are handling our own production and fulfillment now, like that's an entire side of the business. So Brandon finds himself in a small office sitting above a warehouse every day of the week, and it's it seems awful. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> um, I get to sit in like just like in like my you've seen my office. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I would take that over the boardroom with the warehouse. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a window that faces out. Yes, like, not into a warehouse. Yeah, he, the only window, <laughs> he has zero natural light. The only window faces into the warehouse. Yeah, that's, that's good for your mental very, health. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've heard that not natural light is great for you. It's better. I hear it's <laughs> ideal. Fluorescent yeah. only. Yeah, yeah. I've Especially if you want to become a vampire, perfect. I've changed all light. the bulbs in my house to fluorescence. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Does he have blinds that he closes so the rest of the <laughs> no no the it's just the end. Yeah. it's just the window open because it's the only way there's airflow because the only air conditioner is in the warehouse. So window open, just blasting ranchero music directly into the office all day, every day. Sounds awesome. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's excellent on calls. Um, <laughs> anyway, so you're in the boardroom. Sorry, I totally so, yeah, distracted. We're, we're so in the boardroom. Long. And so uh, one of our partners from Tommy Chunk's team actually uh, is sitting there going, hey, so what's next? What do you want to do? And I'm like, I would like to do like a male, a men's health offer, like a male enhancement, not below the belt male enhancement, but like a testosterone support, oh, yeah. muscle support, health offer. Yeah. And... Uh, and he just asks, he poses the question, he goes, you know, if you could pick any celebrity in the world to work with, who would it be? And the real answer, I really, really wanted to work with Carl Weathers, the guy from Rocky IV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and Mandalorian. And Mandalorian. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. mm -hmm. by the way, um, watch the season finale. Right I won't yeah. give any teasers. I don't know how they do that so well. <laughs> like, holy crap. Like, can they just make all of television? Like, it'd be great. <laughs> That's John Favreau, right? Yeah. Yeah, that guy's a genius. I know. But uh, I want I desperately, because I thought that like, okay, aging celebrity that everyone ends, remembers from the 80s is gotta be the, the formula for success, Stars, right? Because that's yeah. what worked with Tommy Chong. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was gonna say Carl Weathers, but the way the question was phrased, it's like swing for the fences and like pff, Mike Tyson. And he just looks me dead in the eye and goes, I get you, Mike. And I'm like, come on. He goes, I get you, I get you call with Mike next week. And he did. Like he just, <laughs> because Mike and Tommy were both in the cannabis business, mm -hmm. he was able to call a guy he knows who worked with Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson's previous cannabis company um, and got us a meeting with Mike's manager. And we had this track record of success. Like, look what we did with Tommy Chong. So the, the, the gates were open to us. It was like, do whatever you want. We formulated a brand new product. Big mistake. By the way. <laughs> uh, should not have done that. I don't recommend you do that. Um, spent millions, literally millions of dollars on just raw ingredients, R and D testing, the whole thing. Um, developed. This, I will like, say though, the product was very good. Like it's I very used good, it, but it's it hard to understand. Good. Yes, I was very confused. <laughs> yeah. But and, after you and explained I know it to you me at least like twice, yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Now imagine if Mike Tyson's explaining it to you. I would understand less, but I would enjoy it more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that seemed to be the result we got in the marketplace. So. Uh, it was a it was a wild ride, right? And I was like, you know, you're you're doing that math, and you're like, Mike Tyson's like one of the top five most famous people in the world, right? Like, he may not be like he's not actively fighting anymore, but although at the time he was just about to do that Roy Jones thing. Yeah, yeah. So he, I'm like, this is perfect. It's a male male health product. Mike Tyson just very publicly lost a hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. It's Mike effing Tyson. Like that. This is a formula. Like we're gonna print money. I'm gonna retire to Mykonos. Like I'm done. We're out of here. 
Um, and I'm like, you know, putting on like putting out charts and like, you know, oh, Mike Tyson's at least oh, what, five times as famous as Tommy Chong. I think that's fair to say. <laughs> and plus, with you know, Tommy Chong, very being scientific a, calculation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tommy Chong not <laughs> able to advertise on, everything. On, on Facebook at the time, right? So I'm mm. like, well, I can advertise on Facebook. That's a in the plus column, you know. And I'm like, this is going to be easily. 10 times as big as Tommy Chung. And you'll recognize that none of what I just did was math. <laughs> uh, just because marketer math. You yeah. did marketer math. Yeah. Just because you had numbers to it, don't make it math. Yeah. Yeah. Math, Kyle and I hear yeah. it on calls every day. It's yeah. That, yeah. It's that, okay. it's Where did that come from? My mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote the number, so I read the number. And so I, it. it's yeah. a ink. So I just told you true. the number. I told you where it came from. Yeah. yeah. This math. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, I I do an impression for my friends of like every regional sales manager ever of like we expect you to hit three hundred percent of KPIs this month. What what do you have to support that? Well, people really seem to like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our expectations are what's driving. Yeah. we expect it. Yeah. <laughs> D- didn't you hear me say a minute ago? I expect it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um. So, and we 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 poured everything we had at the time into into launching the Mike Tyson offer. Luckily, uh, you know, Tommy Chunk CBD continued to produce. Because, uh, you know, we spent a lot of money and we lost quite a bit of money. You so, a lot of past tense yeah. for the Mike Tyson offer. Is there? It is over. Yeah. 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 Did it, was it just the market mismatch or like a? Complete market mismatch. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about that. Because yeah. I think it's really always an interesting conversation. Because I think just out back, like I could see how I think all of us in that moment. And I remember you telling me about the Mike Tyson offer. And I thought, holy crap, what a home run. It's, like, the, it felt it's the biggest like, thing in the world. Yeah. It felt like the banner of just dollar signs. Like yeah. all everyone that could have been involved in that would have thought this is a slam dunk, but it wasn't. And I think celebrities could carry some of that. Um, We've seen it before, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. They they mm-hmm. they have this feeling of like it's gonna be a guarantee, but it isn't, right? It's so absolutely. So, yeah, not. let's talk a little bit about a lot of, something that felt like a home run, but wasn't. Yeah. No. In hindsight, we made a ton of mistakes because we over estimated the impact of just having a celebrity on the bag. Mm-hmm. By the way, our product came in a bag, also a mistake. Um, it, uh, a bag of bags. It was, it was a, a bag it, yeah, it was a it was a giant bag of of little stick packs. It was, okay. it was like a, a drink powder. Gotcha, so it's yeah. like with, with different times. You had the AM and PM. Yeah. So first of all, split the formula in half, so they have to take half in the morning and half at night. Make that a big deal. Make it a selling point. Even yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have to think about this more. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then, but don't worry. Don't worry, the sticks are going to be very similarly designed. <laughs> and one of them makes you fall asleep. So don't take the wrong one before you drive to work. Um, or if you want to fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right? I guess yeah. I want to get out of work that day. Yeah. The Mike Tyson way. So it's like um, we we did a bunch of R&D. We, we sourced like effective doses of these incredible ingredients. Like, you know, it's the base of the thing was creatine. We included this ingredient called HMB, which helps retain muscle mass when you're in a caloric deficit. Um, so if you're dieting and taking this stuff, it like helps you uh, retain strength and muscle mass, helps uh, blunt you the appetite. Sexy, right? Yeah, keeps you, creatine is the most researched anabolic ingredient on the planet, short of steroids, right? Like, um, came with a bunch of other stuff in it. I won't go. I won't try to reiterate the sales pitch because, like I said, we're already a swing and a miss. But um, <laughs> I love it. We have so many bags left. I'm gonna be on it for the rest of my life. Well, but, hey, if they want some, we'll make sure to put your contact info <laughs> and people could like reach out. So I still have the sales, sales page up somewhere. So yeah. if you guys want something, <laughs> like if I'm that, doing yeah, a good like job. That versus the Tommy Chong, like, what were the kind of the big differences of the system? So ironically, there? Yeah. We, we took the AM PM dose thing directly from the Tommy Chong offer. I thought that was a benefit of the Tommy Chong offer. Mm-hmm. And I think in a lot of ways it was because it allowed us to double the value prop mm-hmm. because everyone in the CBD space at the time, if you're in CBD now, you're selling gummies or you're selling like disposable vapes or that kind of thing. But at the time, everyone in the CBD space was selling tincture bottles, mm-hmm. right? And so you'd just buy one, three, or six tincture bottles was the standard offer. Well, by just doing an AM dose and a PM dose, A, I was able to ascribe a bunch of benefits to CBD that you don't normally see. And we were able to basically double the, the value stack, right? Like you get not one, but two bottles for a 30-day supply, blah, blah, blah. Um, so when you have a comparable like that, I think having splitting it in the morning and an evening, evening dose, if you can support that with like benefits to the consumer, really is a dope uh, no pun intended, uh, uh, <laughs> differentiator. But if you're just making up a product out of whole cloth, don't just arbitrarily make it more complex. Like, I guess if, if there's one lesson, that's one. Um, and then two, like, test your product market fit before trying to retain a celebrity and pay a massive royalty. Um, because it's like, if the product wouldn't work without Mike Tyson, it ain't going to work with Mike Tyson. One thing we hadn't factored was, like, we'd been selling CBD for years without Tommy Chong. Tommy Chong was a, a difference maker. He was a force multiplier. But it's like he wasn't going to turn a stinker into a winner. And we just went out with cold with an offer. It's like, well, it should work. Well, why? Because Steve Gunn thought of it. 
And Steve Gunn is a genius. Just look at all the the line goes up. You know, like, <laughs> it's like so. You know, we. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do I need to tell the numbers I thought yeah. of earlier? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hold on. I've got a piece of paper around here yeah. somewhere Facebook that explains what a genius I am. He was on a napkin. Equals, mm, It'll be in my yeah. biography one day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We're we're taking pictures of stuff. Like we're going to want to record this for posterity. You know, now it's just now I just drink this and it's, <laughs> it's just a sad scrapbook. But no, I, I think that's a really interesting thing because I, I think we'll, we'll talk about this more, but like. You know, oftentimes we assume celebrities are the the Ark of the Covenant kind of thing. Like that is the missing well, piece to making an offer. We work. also used him wrong. Okay, yeah. So let's, let's talk a little well, as yeah. much as you can because I know there's some sensitive factors to. Talk yeah, about yeah. Here. So no, but like Mike Tyson has another company that he started right around the same time we started working with him. So he had a cannabis company. I, I don't know the the details, but his previous cannabis venture, for whatever reason, they they folded. I don't I don't know what's going on there. But he recently relaunched a new cannabis company called Tyson 2.0. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn by saying that. I'm, I'm sure they'd like the free press. Uh, mm-hmm. And I understand it does very, very, very well. I don't get to participate in that. I, they didn't, they're not writing Steve a check because I didn't do anything. <laughs> but it would be super nice if they did, you know. Uh, <laughs> Tyson 2.0 is a fantastic brand. They branded it perfectly. It's a proven product. People are going to buy cannabis whether Mike Tyson's face is, is on it or not. But at the moment of purchase, Mike Tyson's probably a difference maker. You look right. at the Mike Tyson brand and you go, well, I could buy this, you know, Kush dude or whatever brand of marijuana I've never heard of, or I can buy the Tyson one. Well, yeah. I'm going to buy the Tyson one. Um, and they branded it perfectly. What they leaned into was Mike Tyson's recent image over like the last 20 years of being funny. Mm-hmm. Mike Tyson has really yeah. uh, worked hard to shed that aggressive late 80s, early 90s, you know, from the streets fighter image and really embrace his funny side and really embrace like, like, hey, I'm actually, he's a really thoughtful, philosophical dude who likes to laugh and have fun and smoke a bunch of pot. Um, it really balanced out the flaws of what was a horrifying human. Like, I think a lot of us younger, you forget how scary Mike Tyson Yeah, was. no, and so we tried to tap into that. Yeah. So our thinking, and I don't know that I was 100% wrong on this, but I think my bank account does. Um, but The data says. Yeah, the data says I'm wrong, but I have a piece of paper. Yeah, I have another napkin that <laughs> yeah. says I was really right. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the bet we were making at the time, and I think it was the wrong one now that I you know go back and do the postmortem on it, was uh, we're going after a guy who's 40 to 50 to 60 years old. And that guy grew up in the late 80s and early 90s mm-hmm. idolizing Kid Dynamite, idolizing Iron Mike, Iron right, Mike yeah. Tyson. Mm-hmm. Like the unstoppable killing machine who took out, you know, who uh, took out Spinks and uh, everyone. Yeah, everyone. 41 consecutive knockouts without a loss. Yeah. 41 Crazy. professional knockouts. I mean, he was known for he was not insane. getting your money worth on your pay-per-view because the, the fights yeah. didn't last long. I mean, yeah. we, I, you know, I've got the poster of him stepping over, uh, what's his name, in the ring, uh, Braddock. It was, I mean, it just, it was insane. Uh, and that's who I wanted to channel because I'm like, this is, you know, it's a call to arms. Gentlemen, get your, you know, get your that's nuts up. Let's go. think of when Mike Tyson, right? It's like, yeah. It's yeah. Like, and it turns out it was the wrong move. Because, yeah. like, that's not compelling online, I don't think. Or at least we're not, we weren't reaching the enough of the market, right? Like, the people who bought the product love the product. We still have very passionate customers who, you know, they're buying right now. I, you know, I'm getting sales alerts on my phone. Um, but we weren't able to influence enough people to try the product because I think we just missed Meanwhile, Tyson 2.0, they've got, you know, dispensary distribution like the Cheech and Chong brand does in, you know, states where it's legal. Um, and then he's also got a hemp derived line, uh, you can get it like Tyson20.com, and that thing is flying off the shelves. I knew I was in trouble when, you know, we're struggling to make the IM21 offer work, and everyone knows me sort of in the DR industry. I was like, hey, you're the Mike Tyson guy, you're the Mike Tyson guy. And Mike's team put out a, a video, uh, put out a press release about their uh, hemp gummies called Mike Bites. And they're hemp derived THC gummies, and they're in the shape of an ear with a little bite taken out. Oh, I saw oh those. gosh, yeah, yeah. that's so good! I remember that. I now. saw the Instagram videos yeah. he did on those. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I will show you my my like I message yeah. and my Facebook messenger. I was getting blown up for three days. People were going, "Is this you? Holy shit! This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Is this you?" And I'm like, "I really wish that was me," because yeah. <laughs> nobody responded when my <laughs> dropped. <laughs> like, yeah. um, and so that that brand I understand is, is I, I don't have the numbers obviously, but I understand it's doing very. Very, very well. And mm-hmm. ours just kind of came and went and, 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 you know, no thunder. Well, you know, I think what's really interesting about what you said, too, is like when you look at if you were able to sell I am 20 in the 90s, 
the early 90s, I think it's a very different product, right? Like imagine that being on paid for TV ads where you could talk about it, you could show it, you could demonstrate it. You're it's talking too, about right? getting a piece yeah. of Mike Tyson as an elite, dangerous man yeah. at the peak of that. But over that time, since the 90s, things have not gone well for Tyson in that regard. And right? see, I He's thought really we were able to that. recapture that because we were coming right off the end of him losing 100 pounds and having that resurgence fight, and like he was kind of back in the headlines No, again. I totally get that. Yeah. Really thought we were going to nail it, and no. But I, but I think what, what's and probably And it could have just is, been the copy as well, like yeah. right? Maybe the idea was solid, and I just wrote mm. out of it. I, it was I, probably that. Yeah, yeah. it could be. <laughs> probably. You know, so no. I actually, My I therapist actually tells think, me it was. I think one of the problems, though, I, I actually, I'll, I'll, I'll support that. I think that offer probably doesn't work anytime. Because so. of what Mike Tyson has done post that, right? Like Mike Tyson went from being a like the dan most dangerous, scariest man. Baddest man. But on if Earth. I asked, if you asked anybody under the age of 40, their opinion of Mike Tyson, it is not him as the most dangerous. It's the hangover. Man. Yes, it's the hangover. It's the him memes. as this, like yeah, it's, it's a, him yeah. talking in a high pitch with hey, Mike Tyson, right? Like, I like really it's wish like Mike that one specifically with that, because he doesn't actually have that voice anymore. Yeah. You ever listen to Mike yeah. Tyson talk now on his podcast? Yeah, he's got a he's, very he's he speaks in a lower register. He's got yeah. he's got a very mature voice now. Yeah, he's definitely maybe worked on that potentially. I think so. Yeah, but but he you think like like it's sure. funny because yeah. when I actually I think of Mike Tyson now, the first thing that pops in my head is the cartoon that he did. Mike with Tyson like Mysteries. Mike's, yeah, Mike Tyson Mysteries on card on Adult Swim. Yeah. So like already we're sh we're reshaping the view of Mike Tyson. And and I should have recognized that because at the time he was very much leaning into that like. That was the image he wanted. That was the image he was supporting with all of his media. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do this other thing because I'm so smart. The product so, of him, yeah, I want this. Yeah, yeah. So, and like I said, like, and it very rarely in life when you lose, do you get a direct comparison to somebody who wins mm -hmm. doing the exact same thing you did. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that, that would have been true. a better game yeah. plan. You're right. Well, and so to circle that back, I think one of the things that's, that's important well, it's funny. to well, note here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Well, it's funny because they leaned into right the ear thing, right, which is that's going they back to They literally hired part. Holyfield for the holiday commercials. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> right. Yeah. Brilliant. So, so, I, mean, that, that, I don't even know if I'd the, have the balls to pitch that idea. Yeah. <laughs> hey, remember when? Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, Evander, what are you doing on Christmas? <laughs> oh, sorry. You need to put the phone in the other ear. <laughs> but they leaned to the humor of it, right? Like they made it the light thing. Yeah. 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 But but I think when we go back to that, I think one of the important lessons is, is a lot of people feel like the celebrity could be the end all be all, right? Nope. If I yeah. get that, which honestly is probably derived because we just want to hang out with celebrities. Right? And lots like of you got to hang out with yeah. Mike Tyson because of I that did not get to hang out with Mike Tyson. I wish I got I to hang out. I assumed you got to hang <laughs> out with Mike Tyson, right? No, but like to be able to write from that position, yeah, it was to be able amazing. To be close to that, like we know that was, star feels warm, and we want to be close to it. But it doesn't necessarily mean success if you don't pair it right. Yeah, like it was. Uh, it's the, the analogy I draw is um, any anybody who spent a lot of time in the gym in their early twenties, like trying to get big, trying to get strong. You ask them why they're doing it. They're like, "I'm gonna get chicks, bro. I'm gonna get chicks." And then you go out being the big muscle guy at the bar. And dude's going, oh man! Every, guy, every guy's like, "How much <laughs> you, you bench, doing, man? How much yeah. you bench, bro? What do you yeah. What are you benching? I bench that, yeah. right? Because at the end, of, it, that's the way it was. Like when you are the guy who's quote unquote working with Mike Tyson, every marketer on the planet's like, "What's it like to work with Mike Tyson?" But you know who doesn't care? The customers. Mm, yeah. Unless you're doing it right. Yeah. Which obviously we weren't. So. Yeah. So that being said, we talked obviously like about the the failures that celebrities can represent. Yeah. Let's kind of circle back a little bit about how. When properly paired, how do you utilize a celebrity and that brand appropriately to become a multiplier versus a subtractor? So we kind of talked about the subtractor side, but Tommy Chong on the flip side was the complete opposite. Absolutely. And now you use that to leverage to even more products and more success. Yeah. So talk a little bit about how you've learned from the Mike Tyson thing to, to take that to continued success and pairing the right celebrity with the right copy, right marketing, right product. Yeah, and, and this is the part where I sound like, okay, please, right? Like, <laughs> w without the ability to contextualize things, right? Like, there are things I heard people say my entire life uh, that I, like, without proper context, I'm like, okay, yeah, all right, that's the thing you gotta say when the camera's on. Um, but now that I realize the sort of all the context that goes into it, um, you have to find what the authentic voice for the brand is in the market, right? Like, um, not every brand is is truly authentic, but they do have a brand voice that people are familiar with, right? And because Tommy Chung was this lovable stoner hippie for his entire career, he, he has a famous line he says all the time uh, when they talk about like what the difference between he and Cheech is, and he goes, "Well, Cheech 
is an actor. And Cheech really is a very good actor, right? People yeah. watch, you know, Tin Cup. He just did that yeah. movie on Amazon. He's like, Cheech is an actor. I'm just Tommy Chong, <laughs> right? Like, he's just playing a heightened version of himself, right? Like, he is, in a certain way, that character, right? He's a, he's a lot more astute in real life, obviously. He's a, he's a really sharp guy. But um, he's just that lovable hippie. He believes these things that he's saying, you know? Um, and so it was very easy for us to kind of tap into the zeitgeist of what people remembered about or believed about Tommy Chong. Um, and because we were able to be as successful as we were with it, obviously we made the Chong family a lot of money. Um, when the conversation happened to reunite Cheech and Chong under kind of the banner, like they've been doing shows together again for yeah. years, um, but they had separate brands with regard to everything cannabis, everything CBD. Um, and some very smart people behind the scenes were like, you know, you guys make a lot more money together, right? Like everything you do together is kind of a force multiplier because you, you balance each other really well. That's the brand people are, are yearning for. Um, so a lot of people, a lot smarter than me, uh, had the conversations and they, and they were able to bring them together. They created something called Cheech and Chong's Cannabis Company. Uh, and that's now grown into a, the entire Cheech and Chong brand. So it's like, I mean, I, I, you know, if you'd asked me four years ago if I'd be selling T-shirts, I, I, I would say no, uh, <laughs> unless it was some sort of you know weird print-on-demand scam, right? But uh, <laughs> glad you added scam onto that. <laughs> print, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's like opportunity. Yeah. Steve. yeah. But uh, yeah, so everything from like you know Cheech and Chong branded merch to they like, they sponsor a line of like you know glass bongs and stuff like that. Uh, they've obviously got a regulated cannabis brand, and then. We brought them back together for for like a full spectrum hemp line of products, right? Mm -hmm. So like adding a legal amount, a federally legal amount of all the cannabinoids back into the product, um, that gives a completely different experience. And it's like we're because it's Cheech and Chong and not just Tommy Chong, we're able to have a more playful image. We get to joke a lot more, and the although we kind of joked a lot in the original version, um, and we're actually running both simultaneously. So we're you know, we're reporting every day the results from, you know, CBD customer acquisition. And then because we've got created this entire secondary brand, we're able to cross promote people into the into the full spectrum hemp brand um, and back and forth, depending on what, you know, what the user's looking for in a product. Uh, and it gives us two front ends to acquire customers. So it's like both products exist as now the back end to each other. And then they're both customer acquisition machines. So it's like, and, and that happened at just the right time. Meta and now Twitter have loose, loosened their CBD uh, and hemp derived cannabinoid marketing restrictions. And so, yeah, I mean, the the new Cheech and Chong, the primary product is called Cruise Chews. We actually just launched a line of of uh, seltzers uh, in Minneapolis. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, it looks so good. Yeah. We're gonna I, have to re just I just found out we have to re rename them. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Somebody forgot to do their trademark research. Oh, oh. very important. Yeah. It's too bad. They're, it's a they're, great looking can. They're so, selling yeah, like crazy too. Classic direct response mistake to not do trademark research. We have <laughs> we have people on staff whose entire job is to do that. Oh. I mean, not for a while, not for long. Now a different person doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, we're really excited. I, those things are the 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 first test run of like forty thousand cans is almost sold out. Wow. It's yeah, it's going nuts. So it's CBD seltzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's like a full spectrum hemp seltzer. Oh, cool. So it's like no booze, but like it's, it's fun at parties kind of thing. A after the call, I'll show you the the um, I can love images. Seltzer. They are yeah. super great. I hope we can find another name that's just as good. <laughs> we'll brainstorm this out. I appreciate that. I really appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. That's good. We will not copy. We won't look up any of the copyrights. So okay, don't worry. I've got a guy. GR fashion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A different guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, I just to kind of circle back, I think one of the things that's really powerful with that is this like, the right pairing when you could have, and you, you mentioned it too, it's adopting what they already have it's like, and knowing that market fit fit their personality and their yeah. zeitgeist fit. I'm so lucky like, that yeah. like Tommy Chung became available as CBD was cresting as a product, right? It's like, it'd be like if I was launching a stovepipe hat offer and like Abe Lincoln came back from the dead, right? Like, it, I, it's I feel like, like there's it's no weird that better. you think that was the thing that he would do if he came back from the dead, that we'd like, we would sell stovepipe stove pipe hats. Yeah. <laughs> like, but yes, you're right. Yes. Well, but, Oh, man, I was going to take make an offer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he can't end it again, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's like I can't. I was on the drive up here. I was actually like, who would be another like celebrity that fit the market that well? Like a name you would trust for that product because of their history. And I literally, the only example I came up with was the Abe Lincoln Nelson. example, which yeah. immediately shut all over. it right away. <laughs> I, I will tell you, uh, n n no regret in my voice, we kicked the crap out of Willie Nelson. I mean, he's not that big of a guy. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> like, Willie Nelson does have a CBD brand. Oh, uh, sense, and we, yeah. we, we run them all around the world. That yeah. is yeah. awesome. What, what, what do you think of the And Tommy, there? And, yeah. Tommy and Willie are like old friends. They go way yeah. back. 
Um, I can imagine. Yeah, because I yeah. think he's Willie Nelson's the only person to like smoke out Snoop Dogg that he talks about. <laughs> really? That's yeah, crazy. there's like an interview where he's talking about the highest he's ever been was with Willie Nelson. To be fair, if you asked me like who could do that, it'd be probably Tony Chong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> Willie Nelson. Yeah. 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 But so what do you think? That, I mean, looking at like celebrity brand A versus B in that kind of market, like why do you think Tommy Chong is having more success than Willie Nelson in that? At the at the risk of like. Uh, giving myself a compliment, which I'm, I'm. You've real, been very bad at that so far. I don't, like, to, I don't, I don't like to do. Ask my I mother. Tell, yeah. um, and this is why I did the bottle because you should yeah. give yourself more compliments. Yeah. yeah no. Uh, at the at it's we have a history and direct response, mm -hmm. and it's a lot easier when you're used to using every tool in the toolkit to try to get that customer um, stuff that I wouldn't do today as a big brand with a name. But when it's easier to go to take it to 100, 110 and dial back to what works for brand advertising than to just go, well, we've got this celebrity and Willie Nelson is a huge celebrity when it comes to marijuana, cannabis, CBD. Um, that should be enough, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's it, ironically, it's the same lesson we should have learned with the Tyson thing, right? Yeah. Like it, you, you really need to if you don't have that base on the fundamentals, you're just never going to have that kind of scale because. At the end of the day, it's a customer acquisition game. If you can acquire customers, break even or preferably profitably, luckily for us, we're, we're still profitable even on the acquisition, um, then you've got cash flow to acquire more customers. And like, and if you know how to nurture your customers and do all those like cool brand things that you should be doing as a brand, then you've got a healthy lifetime customer value. But um, you can't get there if you don't know how to acquire customers. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, introducing name your product is not a good headline. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Verse, what was the main headline for the Tommy Chong offer? <laughs> Cancer saved my life. A little bit more compelling. There's, there's a right? yeah, There's <laughs> yeah. a thumb yeah. stopper. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so all that being said, I think uh, just circling it back here, so just to bring it back to clickbait, right? Um, so because that's what we make do it all here. about Absolutely. us. Kyle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Come uh, in here with your nail tequila. tequila. <laughs> <laughs> do I get to keep this? By the way, is this you mine? One hundred percent. Thank keep you. That. Yeah, Fine. we have far we only too many of these on the stairs. We have a lot. Yeah. We, we have like, more. We no, have we're, more. we're gonna we're gonna harvest it for DNA. We actually were taking so just you behind the scenes. Um, being that we've started this new like drink thing, I think we're gonna work on getting like a full bar set Ooh. for like affiliated. Very madman. I now put it on I like the how podcast. Kyle's making this like this is a big idea. We've all had it in a boardroom. Kyle just came up with this like <laughs> yes, in like, the previous like, podcast. More than yeah. the last couple <laughs> hours, but it's happening. I've Four people it. in the office seem to like. I've recorded it, right? Yeah, I've recorded it. So yeah, it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's not a bad just like. Yeah. Mike Tyson offer it has to happen yeah whether it works or not <laughs> so um but but just going back to this bring back to Clickbank so being that you guys have had all the success I think one thing just to plug in other people could share in the success now now it's yeah. actually available on Clickbank both for affiliates are. yeah both yeah. cruise shoes and um the good vibes offer with good Tom vibes Chong. Yeah. so you have Cheech and Chong or if you're just like well I don't know if I want to do I'd like to go solo you have Tommy Chong yeah and well. they have they're very different sales assets right yeah. like so you know, in order to, to 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 go back to the point about like you know CBD is a known entity, so to really sell CBD in a direct response um, setting and and make it effective and create enough margin that you know affiliates can participate and make money with it, you've got you've really got to tell a, a great story, yeah. right? And so that's a, a long form offer to tell that cool story, mm -hmm. um, and and really differentiate the product. Whereas like you know cruise shoes, we can lean more heavily on the brand. It does roughly the same numbers in terms of conversion rate. Uh, and it's it's a lower AOV but a slightly higher conversion rate in our experiments and, and testing on native and on meta. Um, so what we find is that we we generate basically the same ROAS with both offers. So there's you know it's pretty healthy depending on you know what traffic source you're running it on. It, both offers crush on email, um, but really depending on you know if you're it's truly health and wellness list you know sixty plus. Uh, good vibes is, is kind of a hard offer to beat. Um, it's got that whole kind of you know rejuvenation fix your sleep angle. Um, and then the, the branded Cheech and Chong Cruise Shoes offer, I think, uh, excuse a little younger. I mean, still 40, 50, your standard DR audience. But yeah, it really just depends on, you know, what kind of traffic you like to like to play with. Listen, I almost bought quite a bit of some Tommy Chong or Cheech and Chong stuff in Vegas recently. So I would say definitely younger for the co-branded stuff. I've actually but got a Got a got a, a bag upstairs for you. All right. Well, let's not put that on a record podcast. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but but no, I just I, I wanted to plug that because I think it's really important. We talked about this offer is working really well. It's a perfect market fit with celebrity. But just yeah. to circle back, remember, yeah. celebrity is not the magic bullet. This isn't the biz op magic money button. Yeah. For although I am still offer. looking for that. So if you've got a map, I'll you know. 
We'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> I, got new, I got a newsletter for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I have some, but it's, I, just, I will, it's just two, it's twenty nine ninety seven to get in. I'll tell you all about it. Don't worry. <laughs> You should you should test twenty seven ninety seven. Okay, all right. Okay. Let's use More sevens. Yeah, yeah. Sevens. It's it's twenty seven seventy seven. Seventy seven seventy seven. But with the bump offer, it makes it eighty seven seventy seven. Yeah, even better. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. To put a button on it, it's like celebrity in your brand is a difference maker. It's not an offer maker. Yeah, that's great. That's a great way to say it. Yeah. So, um, well, awesome. So again, for all those that want a piece of the right celebrity offer, right? A perfect <laughs> celebrity offer. You now have it on ClickBank. So on if Clickbank. you're listening to this podcast right now, which obviously you are because I just said it. So <laughs> on the podcast, no <laughs> Yes, you're listening to it on the podcast. Yeah, go to the marketplace. It'll also be in the show notes. We're going to be able to link out to these things. You can start promoting it today or tomorrow um, if you reach out and get approved for it. Um, so, and, and also, I hope you definitely could learn for a couple things. One, the right celebrity with the right product makes sense, but they are, like you said, you said it perfectly, I'm not going to reframe it. And the other thing, too, I think, is don't forget that the grind is a part of the process, right? Absolutely. Success is not a measurement of, sometimes it's more of a measurement of perfect timing than it is of just, you know, lack of failure. Yeah. Right? No, so it's you, like, you're going to have to put in the work sometimes. And if you're in the journey right now, as we look at the camera, <laughs> if you're in the journey, keep along the journey, right? Know yeah. that you're learning, you're improving, you're getting better. Your Tommy Chong might be around the corner, but geez, just keep plugging away. Keep plugging yeah. away. Uh, you know, uh, one thing my friends know about me is I know nothing about sports, so excuse me if I, as I butcher this metaphor. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you're standing at the plate and you know how to swing a bat, you're still going to miss pitches every time. doesn't yeah. matter. If you stop swinging, you will never hit one. Learn how to swing a bat and then keep swinging, and eventually you will hit a pitch. Sometimes it'll be a single, sometimes it'll be a home run. That's awesome. And then you'll be on a podcast on ClickBank like Steve Young talking about your Steve home Young. Steve Gunn. <laughs> Steve Young. Even I, I just, know that's a sports I, I know, name. I just, yeah. I, we, we talk too much sports that I just changed your name. I'm yeah. for it. Because I, I always, I'm always worried I'm going to start mentioning like um, Tim Gunn. And oh, really? You, know, you don't Project go James? Runway. Everyone goes James Gunn now. Yeah. That would probably be more I get, relevant. I get James Gunn more That'd often. That'd be more relevant. But I watched a lot of Project Runway <laughs> in the first couple seasons. My wife watches whatever he's doing now. That like uh, I wasn't aware he was doing anything. He's got yeah. Him and Heidi Klum jump ship to another show that's exactly he's, the he's same. He's doing a voice on some children's show too. Oh my god, really? that sounds yeah, off putting. Does he tell him to make it like, work? And I was like, is that the guy from? And my wife's like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He's like, make it work, children. Yeah. But like, it's like it's like making the cut. I think is what my wife calls it. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. It sounds like what I'm about to watch when I get home. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, but yes, all, all that being said, um, really appreciate your time, Steve. Thank you. Really appreciate coming up. We're excited to spend the evening together um, with our networking event, ClickBank Connects, and then also some dinner afterwards. But um, really appreciate it. Appreciate all your listeners, all you listeners, but all you listeners. Jeez, I've obviously reached the point where I can't talk anymore. You should put the hat back on. <laughs> yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. So, um, but appreciate, um, appreciate you listening in. Remember, rate, review, subscribe. Tell us what you need more of. What are the questions you have? Who are the people you'd like us to talk to? We really do listen and dictate that for our future episodes. Um, again, we want to thank you for the time. And what do we tell the people, Thomas, at the end of every single episode? We tell them happy scaling. Happy scaling. Yeah. Until next time, thanks so much.